In this video, we'll talk about conjugacy classes in AN in general a little bit, but then we'll focus on conjugacy classes in A5 where we'll say everything. So the full story about how conjugacy classes work in AN is really interesting and a little bit complicated. It's more complicated than in SN. And there are some nice exercises in Dummett and Foot for you to uh, work through some of the details. But I'll start with something that'll be really important to our later proofs. For n at least five, any two three cycles in an are conjugate to each other. So let me pause and say, we can't just take our earlier result that says for any two permutations in SN, if they have the same cycle type, they're conjugate. Because the problem is, even though permutations in AN are contained in SN, if we have two three cycles, sigma one and sigma two in AN, we know that they're conjugate in SN. And that means there is some permutation tau in SN where tau sigma one tau inverse is equal to sigma two. But what if tau is in SN, but is not a permutation in AN? Then this does not say that they are conjugate elements of AN. So that's the important thing here. And to really hammer this home, I want to give you two examples. Uh, in A3, which remember, is isomorphic to Z mod 3Z. It's a cyclic group of order three. The permutations 1, 2, 3, and the permutation 1, 3, 2, these are two three cycles, but they are not conjugate in A3. How do you see that that's true? Well, A3 is abelian. And in an abelian group, every element is in its own conjugacy class. So OK, this is a good example to keep in mind. Maybe a less obvious example is that in A4, these two three cycles, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2, are still not conjugate to each other. And that one you should actually check, like try to see if you can write down a permutation, uh, yeah, where tau, where tau times one, two, three times tau inverse equals one, three, two, and you'll see that you can't do it. All right, so I'm gonna do the first part of the proof of this lemma here, and then I'll pause and erase and do the end. So what's the idea? Let's take sigma to be any three cycle in an. What we're gonna show is that there's a permutation pi in an so that pi sigma pi inverse is the particular three cycle one, two, three. Remember, conjugacy is an equivalence relation. So if sigma is always conjugate to one, two, three, then if you have two three cycles, sigma one and sigma two, and you can show that they're both conjugate to one, two, three, then they're also conjugate to each other. So that's the idea. We're going to send everything to one, two, three. All right, so what do we know? We know that there's a permutation pi in SN such that pi sigma pi inverse equals one, two, three. And now there's two cases. If pi is already in AN, then we're done and there's nothing to do. So the more interesting case is when pi is in SN, but it's not in an. So when pi is an odd permutation. But when pi is an odd permutation, how do you make it into an even permutation? One way to do that is just multiply it by your favorite transposition. So I'm going to pause and erase, and then I'll finish the details of this argument. We know that there's this permutation pi in sn so that pi sigma pi inverse is equal to the three cycle one, two, three. If pi is in an, then we're done. Then sigma and one, two, three are conjugate in an. If pi is not in an, if it's in sn minus an, then it's an odd permutation. So we'll let pi prime be equal to the transposition four, five times pi. And that permutation is now even because it's a product of one more transposition than pi was. So that's an an. And now what happens when we conjugate sigma by pi prime inverse? Sorry, by pi prime. We have pi prime sigma pi prime inverse is equal to four five 
uh, pi sigma pi inverse times four five. Right, so what's going on here is remember that pi prime inverse is pi inverse times four five inverse and four five, the single transposition is its own inverse. So the order switches here. So what do we know? Pi sigma pi inverse is the three cycle one, two, three. So we get four, five, one, two, three, four, five and products of disjoint cycles commute. So you can move, you can switch two of these and now the four fives cancel and we just get the three cycle one, two, three. So we've shown that starting from a permutation that shows that sigma is conjugate to one, two, three in SN, as long as we have two elements not in the set one, two, three, then we can multiply by another transposition to get this element in SN to definitely live in AN. Okay. So I'm going to pause and erase, and then I'll talk about uh, what we know about centralizers of elements in AN. Now we're going to take what we know about centralizers of cycles in SN to determine some things about centralizers of cycles in A5. And uh, as a consequence, we're going to figure out some things about co the conjugacy classes of elements of A5. So we know the centralizer of an M cycle sigma in SN. What is that? It's the set of all permutations in SN that commute with sigma. So it's all the pi in SN so that pi sigma pi inverse equals sigma. So what is the centralizer of sigma in AN? Well, it's the, it's the set of all pi in AN so that pi sigma pi inverse equals sigma. So it's just the intersection of this centralizer in SN with AN. So you just compute the centralizer in SN and you see which of those permutations are actually in AN. All right, so let's do an example. The centralizer in S5 of the permutation one, two, three of this three cycle is given by taking any element in the cyclic subgroup that it generates and multiplying by any permutation of the other N minus M, which is five minus three, any of the other two elements of one, two, three, four, five. So you take any one of these times any permutation of four, five, but there are only two permutations of four, five. There's the transposition and the identity. So what does this mean? The centralizer in A5 of the permutation one, two, three is just the things that are in the cyclic subgroup generated by one, two, three. Because if you took something in the, uh, cyclic subgroup generated by one, two, three, and you multiplied by this transposition four, five, you would get an odd permutation. So the point is the order of the centralizer here is three. So what is the size of the conjugacy class containing one, two, three in A5? It's by the orbit stabilizer theorem. This is the orbit of this thing under the conjugacy action. It's the size of A5 divided by the order of the centralizer. So it's 60 over three, which is 20. Okay, this is good because we just showed that when N is at least five, any two three cycles in AN are conjugate to each other. And how many three cycles are there in A5? There are 20. So it better be the case that this number is also 20, right? So definitely the only things that could be conjugate to a three cycle in AN are three cycles because those are the only things conjugate to your three cycle in SN in the bigger group. Okay, so that's good, that worked. Let's look at the centralizer in S5 of the five cycle, one, two, three, four, five. Well, that just is the cyclic subgroup generated by one, two, three, four, five. In this case, M is five, N is five, N minus M is zero. There's no other N minus M elements to permute. So this is group of order five. Everything in here is already in A5. So the centralizer in A5 is the same as the centralizer in S5. So what is the size of the conjugacy class of the permutation one, two, three, four, five in A5? Well, it's the order of A5 divided by the size of the uh, centralizer, 
which is 60 over five, which is 12. But now something interesting happens. Any two five cycles in S5 are conjugate to each other. So that's something we know. We proved that earlier in this lecture. But there are 24, there are four factorial, 24 five cycles in A5. And there are only 12 things in the conjugacy class of this particular one, one, two, three, four, five. So what's happening here is we have these 24 five cycles and those 24 five cycles that are all conjugate in S5 break up into two different conjugacy classes in A5. There are 12 things conjugate to one, two, three, four, five. Take any other one of those, uh, any other five cycle that's not one of those 12. And the exact same argument here tells you that th that five cycle is in a conjugacy class of size 12 also. So you have these 24 five cycles in A5 and they split into these two conjugacy classes of size 12. So that's what happens in general with conjugacy in AN. For some cycle types, you get the same conjugacy class that you had in SN. That's what happens with the three cycles here. But for some, they split into two conjugacy classes of equal size. And uh, the details are a little complicated, but um, you can see some of them in the exercises in Dumb End and Foot. All right, so there's one other type of element in A5 that we haven't talked about yet, which are products of two transpositions. I'm gonna pause and erase and then tell you about uh, this last type of element. So let's first just give an example of two five cycles in A5 that are not conjugate to each other in A5. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and one, three, two, four, five. So you can check that you believe me and maybe think about uh, why, like how you go from one of these permutations to the other. So let's talk about the last type of element in A5, things that are products of two disjoint transpositions. So like one, two times three, four. This is still in A5, so five is a fixed point of this permutation. It's easy to check, you can just multiply, that this commutes with one, three times two, four, and with one, four times two, three, but does not commute with any three cycle or any five cycle or any of the other permutations of cycle type one, two, two, where five is not a fixed point. So something like one, five times two, three does not commute with one, two times three, four. So this is a very brute force way of saying what the centralizer of this element, one, two times three, four is. It has order four. So that means that its conjugacy class has size, size of A5 over four, which is 15. Okay, this is good. Uh, 15 is the number of permutations in A5 of cycle type one, two, two. Uh, one way to see that is you have five choices for what your fixed point is. And then once you've chosen which four elements are gonna be in those two transpositions, there's three ways to match them up, right? Like if you pick five to be the fixed point, you have one, two times three, four, one, three times two, four, one, four times two, three. So all of these kinds of elements are conjugate to each other. And now, okay, so we found a bunch of conjugacy classes. There's the identity. There are the two classes of 12 five cycles each. And then there's the 23 cycles. And then there's the 15 of these things. And you add up those sizes and you get 60. And that is the size of A5. So there's really nothing missing here. So we have found all of the conjugacy classes in A5. Now, if you go back to the beginning of the first video, we have given an argument that says, given these sizes of conjugacy classes, there's no way to take a union of conjugacy classes that's not just the identity and not all of them that contains the identity and actually gives a proper non-trivial normal subgroup. So in conclusion, A5 is simple. So in the last video, I'll give a second proof that A5 is simple that's going to be more useful for uh, when we generalize um, this argument and prove that not just A5 is simple, but that AN is simple for all N greater than or equal to five.